Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. With PS4, we now have 9.60 support with the lapse exploit running from the web browser, which is properly working now, loading Gold Hen uh, completely. And this is thanks to, of course, Al Azev updating the repo, uh, including 9.60 support. Also 7.00 to 9.60 support is now included in Al Azev's repo. So that even encompasses older firmwares, like if you're still on 7.55 using that really unstable kernel exploit, you'll be able to use laps in future, which will be more stable and run faster. And then also, of course, the vulnerability scope says it goes all the way back to 6.00. So we can also expect support going all the way back to 6.00, which would also encompass previous jailbreaks like 6.72, where you would have the option to run the lapse exploit instead of the current exploit that you're using on that firmware. 9.60 was not able to use the USB method. So the only way of jailbreaking 9.60 beforehand was to use the pppone exploit with another device. Obviously, you could use the jailbreak dongles uh, to jailbreak the console that way. That was kind of the most convenient way of jailbreaking those firmwares up until now. But now, of course, we can do it entirely through the web browser. So, so it's also important to note that the black screen slash save issue uh, is still a problem at the moment with this version, even with these other versions being ported. So what I would obviously recommend is not using this as your primary method of jailbreaking right now. Only use this for testing uh, as it is still work in progress and that issue will need to be resolved before we can kind of switch to this permanently. So now what's happened is we've had other exploit developers who have taken the updates from al -Aziv and have included those updates into their own host to make it compatible with 9.60 and load Gold Hen automatically. So all of that is now included. The one I like to use at the moment is NASCI's host. So just to demonstrate this, I went ahead and updated my uh, PS4 that was on 9.00 up to 9.60. Not that I recommend doing this, I only did that because it's my revertible PS4 that can switch different firmwares and I can revert to older firmwares if I need to. So as you can see, I went ahead and updated this to 9.60. So of course we can just connect to the internet and go to nasky.github.io forward slash PS3 to access the online version of the host and it should load up right there. Now if you do not want to connect to the internet to access it or if you want to get the latest build directly from the repo, you can instead host it locally on your computer. So I just downloaded and installed the Node.js installer and then simply open up a command prompt or PowerShell window on your computer and then type in npm space install space http dash server space dash g and then that will install the http server module for Node.js. So at that point you can just download the code for whichever uh, version of the exploits you want. In this case, I'm using NASCI's version, so I can just download the code and then just extract it to the desktop of my computer. And then from there, if I go into that folder to the same location that has the index.html file, I can just right click in that location, open up a terminal window, and then simply type in HTTP server to run the web server in that location, which will make the exploit host available at my computer's IP address on the network. And from there, I'll be able to access the exploit host locally instead of connecting to it over the internet. But obviously, if you want a quick way to access it, you can just go to nasky.github.io forward slash PS3 and access it over the internet instead. It will go ahead and cache the site for offline use first and wait for that to complete. And then you can just refresh the page. And you can see here it is showing that 9.60 is compatible. So from here, I can just click the button to run the jailbreak. And again, all I have to do is wait a couple of seconds because uh, it does have the same stability improvements that uh, Chameleon's version had implemented for 9.00 so that's been carried over to these newer versions so it jailbreaks it super fast in just a couple of seconds and we have gold hen running on 9.60 and the same should apply for other 9.x firmwares 9.03 9.50 you'll be able to get this up and running without requiring any additional devices so of course 9.60 is the last firmware version on the ps4 that works with the ps3 webkit exploit allowing us to load this from the web browser in order to load the lapse exploit on higher firmwares, we need to use the Lua exploit, unfortunately, until a new WebKit exploit is discovered for a higher firmware. And then we might be able to, you know, load higher firmwares using the web browser in future. But for now, the only thing we have above 9.60 is the Lua exploit with the modified save files to be able to jailbreak firmwares up to 12.02. So speaking of which, we also do have an update for 12.02 on the PS4 using the Lua exploit coming to us from Mohamed Adel or EGYCNQ who was behind or one of the developers I believe behind the Syscon writer for the PS4. So he says I've been playing around for the past few days with something totally new 
and I wanted to share what came out of this. Lua plus Laps, a modified version of the original Laps.Lua script, currently supports PS4 11.0 and 12.02, added a sandbox escape, kernel dumping to USB, automate K-based detection and full FTP access. So we did not have any post-exploitation steps with the Laps exploit when loaded through Lua up until now. Now it will dump the kernel with this version to a USB drive if you have a USB plugged in when you load it and it will also escape the sandbox so that you can get to root FTP access. So just to show this here, if we head over to the repo here, we've got the laps.lua file. You can just go to the code, download as a zip file, and extract that Lua file. So you can see here, it is a Lua plus laps PS4 post-exploitation framework. And if we scroll down, it says it has been successfully tested on 11.0 and 12.02. So all we really need to do here is launch our game on the PS4 that has the remote Lua loader added to it and that will get the save file loaded. Once the remote Lua loader is listening, we can go ahead and switch over to our computer here. We can download, of course, uh, this particular Lua file here, download the zip file, and then extract it to the payloads folder with your remote Lua loader payloads. What I'm gonna do is just rename it to laps underscore new, so I don't overwrite the original uh, laps Lua file from the remote Lua loader, and I'll copy it into that payloads folder. Then I can just right click and open a terminal window. And if you have Python installed, you can just type in Python, the send lua.py script and then of course the IP address of your PS4 along with the port number 9026 and then the name of the lua file that you're sending in this case it's going to be our laps underscore new dot lua and then when we send that file we can see it executes the kernel exploit as normal but when it gets to the post exploitation step it's now dumping the kernel to my USB drive so it is successfully doing some post exploitation dumping the kernel and once that's successful it should be all good and if we want to get root FTP access to the file system, we can just send the FTP server script. So again, entering the same command and then just changing the Lua file to the FTP underscore server. We can send that file and that will run the FTP server on the PS4, at which point we can then connect using an FTP client. So I'm going to use FileZilla, of course, and I'll just enter the PS5's IP address in the host box and port 1337. And then if we quick connect, you can see that we do in fact get connected and we have access to the full file system. Whereas normally if you just send the FTP payload without loading this particular laps.lua right now, it would just give you sandboxed FTP, which only gives you access to, you know, the currently running application, the directories within the sandbox and not anything outside of that. But because we ran the Lua exploit and it's doing the sandbox escape now with post exploitation, it now gives us full root access to the file system so we can access all of the files on our PS4 here. So that's what we have at the moment. Of course, we're just waiting for hopefully a bin loader to come out fairly soon. And then that will essentially allow us to properly jailbreak the PS4 up to 12.02 because we'll be able to send the bin loader and then load something like Hen VTX up to 12.02 so we can run fake packages and essentially get the console jailbroken. So getting much closer now to that being a reality. So there we go. That is another thing that's been added there for the PlayStation 4. Now some updates to the remote Lua loader itself here. We also have a couple more games that have been added recently. So we've got the Fuyu Kiss game, which I covered in my previous update, but we also have the demo version of it that's also been added. And we now have Nora Princess and Crying Cat 2. So it's not the same one as before. We already had Nora Princess and Stray Cat Heart HD, but this is a, this is a different one here. So Crying Cat 2. So a different game. So that is another game that's been added. I believe the winter guest game I talked about before is also being worked on. So hopefully that one will be added soon as well. And we may get a lot more games added, hopefully in the near future. So there's a couple of new games being added there that you can try and get your hands on to be able to load the Lua exploit. We also have a confirmation from Echo Stretch that K stuff is now in the works for 8.00 plus. So they're currently trying to grab all of the offsets to get K stuff ported. So we might start to see, you know, the PS5 getting support for being able to run, you know, your PS5 game dumps and PS4 fake packages, hopefully in the not too distant future here as it is now being worked on. So 7.61 may not be the latest jailbreakable firmware for very long. Not only that, but there's been an update for the existing jailbreaks that use the Lua exploits with this new PS5 Lua menu from Najdek. So what this allows you to do is it gives you a payload selector after running the jailbreak so that you can then load whatever payload you want post exploit, which is something that we've obviously had with the web browser method, which is super convenient, but not with the Lua exploit up until now. So now we can select whatever payloads we want after jailbreaking. All you have to do is download the file here from the repo, 
So download the PS5 Lua menu Lua. You can send this using the remote Lua loader or you can update your auto loader. Uh, if you're using the It's PLK version that auto loads a payload, then essentially you can just take this Lua file, copy it to the remote Lua loader folder on the root of a USB drive and then simply edit the auto load text file to load the PS5 Lua menu instead of a payload. And then once you have that configured, you can plug that USB into your PS5. You can also, of course, copy it to the data folder on the hard drive with PS5 Explorer or FTP if you want to load it from there. And then when you run your Lua game, it will run the exploit as normal. Once it's successfully jailbroken, it will suddenly open up a web page here with the payloads that you can select. So you can see ETA Hen is already available in here. But if you want to add more additional payloads here, you can actually go over to this manage option and then it gives you a QR code that you can scan on your phone which will open up the web page on your phone or of course on your computer you can just go to the IP address of your PS5 with port number 8084. So if we do that on our computer here and we just go to the IP address with 8084 there and it will take us to the management page and then from here obviously you need to be on a device that's connected to the same network as your PS5 here but what you can then do is select the option to download and then you can select any payloads that you want to download and it will download them automatically to the data folder on the PS5. So you'll be able to load them using this menu on the PS5 itself. So all we have to do here is simply just select what payloads we want, like the web server payload, you know, case stuff, uh, any other payloads that you want here. Now this actually doesn't have a huge selection of payloads, but we'll just download the main ones that we want here. I'd probably recommend going over to the UMTX repo from IdleSauce and basically downloading IdleSauce's host there, downloading the code, which contains a payload folder with all of the payloads that are available with the web browser version of the exploit. I can extract those out to my computer and then just select the upload option in the web menu here to upload whichever extra payloads I want from there, like the PS5 debug payload, for instance, and you can get them added there. So you can add payloads, upload them from your computer or just download them from the internet onto the PS5 directly. And then if we switch back over to our PS5 here, you can see we still only have ETA Hen showing up right now. But if I go into the management option and then switch back again, that will refresh it. And then from there, we can see all of the payloads that I downloaded and uploaded from my computer are now available to select. And we can select something like, I don't know, FTP, and that will run the ALF loader and then load the payload that we selected. So, so once again, we're getting more improvements to the Lua exploit to make it more convenient to use and kind of bring it up to the same level as the web browser exploit in terms of convenience. Obviously, the Lua exploit is never going to be as convenient as the web browser exploit, given the fact that you have to have one of those games that is supported. And then, of course, getting the save file on there is also quite tricky sometimes. But anyway, it's good to see that we are getting improvements here for the Lua exploit ongoing. So yeah, anyway, that's going to do it for this update here. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.